that is ready to be painted. That's a neat one. Come on, why wouldn't you want to eat that? What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode out in the garage. Yes, it is a bit messy. Uh, we got a new bed, so we've got the uh, the whole old bed and everything out here. I need to get this all cleaned up. Hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll get that done soon. But we're not here to talk about beds and garages. I've got a new mold uh, today. We're ranking the Wacky Jig. I am super excited for this because this was truly one of my best fish catchers last year. Let's take a closer look. All right, this is the mold we're working with. This is the Wacky Head Jig. It's got five different sizes you can make in there. Now, usually I'm kind of torn between the 1 8th and the 1 16th. Uh, I like that this does have 3 30 seconds in the middle. I think that's probably going to be the one that I use most. But we've got our jig mold. I just plugged in our pot, so that's warming up so we can get our uh, lead melted down. Uh, I've got my little pliers here and then the uh, the hooks that you need. Of course, I'll link all this down in the description below in case this is anything you want to use. I'll have my do it link down there so you can pick them up. These are the number two. I would like to make one with a little bit larger hook. I don't know if they have those. I'll have to look next time, but those are the hooks. And then I got some wire weed guards. Also got some new colors here. Bama Craw we're going to try out. Bruise Gill, which is kind of like a spinoff of June Bug, and then Go Time. This is actually probably my favorite color paint that I've got now. Uh, these are new ones, all just released kind of now with the Bassmaster Classic going on. I guess this video should drop Monday, so by the time you see it, Classic's already over. But uh, Do It just wants those three new colors, which I really like. So enough yapping, let's get this warmed up and start making some jig heads. Okay, so to get this mold loaded up, it's super easy. It only consists of the little hook. And then I'm gonna use these wire keepers. You can make them without the wire keeper and literally just put the hook in and shoot your jig heads. But, but these are shaped like little shepherd's hooks and they just hook right onto the side of the hook like that. They have a little opening. You just get it right in there like that and hook it on. So you can see from above, that's what it looks like. Your hook fits in there and then the wire keepers have just a little channel. We'll see if this will shut. Wanna hear that good positive click. Perfect, so you know the aluminum mold sealed, both sides hit. I'm gonna come over here and pull right into that Mold doesn't take much. You can see I'm just going to shoot this one just to show you. That one is the only one I'm shooting on this one. Open it up and it should pull right out. Grab it and there we go. These are so small they cool down extremely quick. I'm just going to take this, cut that off with my nippers and you can see it does leave just a little bit of kind of a spiky point there. Take the back of my nippers, knock it down just like that and there we go. Perfect. That is ready to be painted. Put that aside. Let's make a few more. I got all my jig heads cleaned up and ready for paint now. So I got all those trimmed down, make sure there's no jagged parts or anything. Uh, and I pre-cut some of these. This is some heat shrink tubing. Um, somebody told me this, I think it was Kuda from Jig Squad that said he does this. That's what this looks like right here. So as we're heating this up over the heat gun, I'm gonna put this over the eye of the hook, this jig head hook here. And it's gonna slowly shrink up and cover just the eye of it right there. So when I dip this in the paint, the eye is completely covered. That way I don't have to clean out the eye of this, uh, you know, after it gets paint and stuff all over, I don't have to clean it out. Normally I have to use a tool like this and get that all chipped out of there and clean it out. But putting this heat shrink tubing over it uh, makes it so I don't have to do that. So check it out. So you can see it started out like this. Once we've uh, done the shrinking over the, uh, the heat gun, shrinks down all the way to that. Just make sure when you put the heat shrink tube on, it's not down actually touching the jig head. See, there's just a little bit of gap there. If it's touching the jig head when you put the powder paint on, when you pull this off, it'll pull off paint with it too. So make sure there's just a tiny gap. Okay, so that baby's all done. Now, before I had like a wire hanging up here, instead of doing that, I got some of these on, I think lure parts online, do it might have some too. But essentially what you do is you just take your jig and push it in here. Now I kind of got, uh, I guess, taken when I bought these because literally all it is is some styrofoam with a piece of like cardboard in the middle. But you stick them in there like that and it allows the jig head to be up like that while they're drying so you don't have to have it like hanging on a you know a wire or anything messed up. Let that dry for a little bit and then of course they need to go in the, uh, the toaster oven, but let's do more, a few more of these. Okay, 
Okay, now that we've got these all baked, I wanted to show you the colors here real quick. This is the Bam Macraw. This one actually turned out pretty neat. When I first got it, uh, I tried it, I was like, eh, I'm not really sure that I like it, but man, this thing does turn out to be a cool color. It's got like the black flake, the orange flake in there. I am definitely digging that one, that kind of sandy brown. That's a neat one. This one is called Go Time, and actually, funny enough, this is my favorite out of these three, and this actually might be one of my favorite jig head colors. So it's like a real dark green pumpkin-ish, and you see there it's got like these black and greenish blue flakes all throughout it. Uh, that one I really, really like as a all around. I think that might be my pick. And then the Brews Gill, which I figured a lot of people would probably think that this is my favorite purple. Uh, it's got kind of that June bug green in it and some red in it. So kind of a spin off of June bug. I like that one too, but man, it's hard to pick. So I wanted to show you how I rig these. Now, if you're making your own soft plastics like uh, these through do it, like the Cinco, if you don't have any additives, sinking additives like salt, uh, or they've got some other sinking deal, the plastic's gonna float. I'm sure, I don't know if, if Do It has some. There might be companies that make a, a, a sinking plastic. I don't know, I've, I've not looked into it, but uh, just as is with the regular like Plastisol plastics, they float. So when I rig up one of these weighted wacky rigs, I get a couple O-rings, slide them on there like this, and I use two of them, one and two, put them right next to each other like that, and I always crisscross them over. Now the advantage of using two, if you put just one on, I don't feel like like I have as good of a hookup ratio because it sits like this with just one. It's it's perpendicular to the bait like that. So I like to use two. Now people, I feel like they make this harder than it should be. When you cross these over, you don't have to get them all pretty and stuff to begin with. If you just go under one like that, you can see how I'm between and one. Take your hook point and back it out just a little bit like that and go around the second one. And if you do it like that, when you pop it through, you can see it's crossed over. So you've got those x over, comes right through. And what that does is that keeps your hook perpendicular to the bait so when they go up to grab it you've got the hook there out and ready as opposed to where it could you know kind of get folded up now I don't know there's some people that argue it doesn't make a difference that's just how I like to do it with them crossed over like that uh, I personally think it helps now the other thing I wanted to give you an up close look at was those weed guards so when you put the wire in there's that little wire form that goes in there it hooks on the hook here so it doesn't pull out and I was putting two of those in there because I like to have the two so you can take these and kind of bend them like my other weightless wacky hooks and you get that kind of effect there which is nice because when you come up to any branches or anything it's going to pop over a little bit easier as to having one for example here's one that has just the one on it it's nice if you got like grass or anything in front of it it'll protect it but as soon as it goes to like a stump or something and falls over it sideways like so it's going to get caught so that's kind of uh, something to think about if you're making these i'm going to have to buy some more wire forms because there's a hundred in a pack but of course burning through two of them like that, you burn through them pretty quick. You can only do half the jigs, but um, I do think you're gonna have a benefit there of keeping it a little bit more weedless, especially if you're uh, somebody who fishes from the bank. Now, if you don't make your own soft plastics and you're looking for some plastics that are a little bit different to throw, I figured I'd give you some ideas here. The Missile Baits 40 is an awesome little stick bait, a little bit different profile compared to, you know, like just the regular Senko. It's got these little kind of ridges or I guess, cuts I don't know what you call those on each end so it's nice because you wacky rig it right here in the middle and to make it easy they even tell you uh, rig here they've even got a line right in the middle uh, so you can figure out where to put your wacky rig hook but this is the bruiser flash color so a black and blue with like some sparkle in it really like that one or just bruiser both do really well around here in the Midwest for me look at that Oh, sparkles. There's also the Six Sense Clout. So I got to use this one. I had a few really good days with it last year. This is the Nirvana color. I had like, I don't remember what it was. The color I had, it was like a pinkish, purplish, bluish. Uh, but this is a really good color. That dark black and blue up top and the green pumpkin. The clout is interesting because it's got all these little like pyramid looking things sticking up on it. So I feel like with a weighted wacky rig, it does really well. You know, it's just that clean stick looking bait. And finally, everybody's got these laying around, the trick worm. So this actually, this jig head is like a flick shake head. That's what really made these big. You know, I, I've been throwing just a, a regular weighted wacky rig with like a stick bait, but I know over in Japan, like they had, you know, the, the jackal flick shake was big. Hook it on there right in the middle like that. And you get a much different action of it because it's a trick worm. It's, you know, a little bit longer. It's not really meant to, you know, wiggle, wave down like a stick bait. So I feel like you get a lot more, you know, kind of wiggle at it. So if you're just letting it barely go and then popping it, you get a lot more movement. So that's something that I've done before. Uh, Bass Pro Shops has, uh, I forget what it is. They've got a worm too. I'll try to link all this down below in case you want to check any of it out. But And it looks really cool. I mean, come on. Why wouldn't you want to eat that? All right, fishing friends, do me a favor. Comment below and let me know if you have a favorite worm that you use 
for a weighted rig or let me know have you even tried a weighted wacky rig have you only thrown like just a regular weightless you know stick bait like this something like this or have you tried putting a little weight in the in the middle of it it makes it fall a little bit quicker you can fish it just a little bit faster and depending on the worm it gives it a little bit more action on the way down try it you'll be surprised but also comment below and let me know what your favorite color uh, of these new colors from duo was the go time that bruised gill or the Bama Croc. Comment below and let me know. I'm interested. And as I said earlier, I am giving away all of these jig heads. I think there's 15 total. Uh, I think I've got some extra stick baits and stuff that I made. Maybe throw in a couple of uh, bags of stick baits that I have. So somebody out there can try the old weighted wacky rig and hopefully catch some fish on it. I'm, I'm pretty certain you will because it catches fish everywhere. I appreciate everyone watching. Comment below and also let me know if there's other jig making or soft plastic. Which of these you like the most because I want to do some more. I've got a jig mold that I want to modify to put a little bit heavier hook in it. So thanks to Jig Squad, Cuda for giving me that tip. We're going to try that and see how it goes. I've never tried to modify my own do it mold. So could work out, could be a disaster. But that's enough for me. I need to get everything on the computer and edit it. So thank you all so much for watching. And until next time.